In our previous tutorial, we looked at how to match a 50 ohm source impedance to a 20 ohm load impedance by using the Smith chart. We saw how this can be accomplished in different ways, and for example, we saw how by going either up or down a constant resistance or conductance circle, we will change the uh, elements that our network comprises of. But what are the differences between the different network types? It is not just a, a matter of going up or down a constant resistance or conductance circle. It is about choosing a network which will be as advantageous as possible for us uh, within the circuit that we use it for. In particular, when it comes to transistors, this is very important. For example, if we have unwanted signals that we don't want to put through the input of our transistor, the input matching network can be designed in such a way so as to filter out these unwanted signals. Again, in the case of transistors, sometimes these devices have got um, a really high gain in regions which are outside our band of interest. And this high gain can cause oscillations. And we can also use the matching network to uh, try and diminish the amplitude of the signals in those very regions so as to avoid the possible onset of oscillations. In this tutorial we will we'll be looking at two main measurements that allow us to understand the behavior of our uh, impedance matching network across frequency. Firstly we will be looking at the reflection coefficient, the S11, across frequency and then we will be looking at the actual frequency response of the network the first measurement, the S11, is quite straightforward. All we have to do is set up a frequency range over which we can sweep our frequency so that we can see how good a match we get across a broader frequency range. To do this, let's go to Project Options and then untick the single point box. And then we'll choose a start frequency of 100 MHz, a stop frequency of 4000 MHz, i.e. 4 GHz, and a step of 1 MHz click on apply and then OK. Then we'll go to graphs, open a new graph, choose a rectangular as a type and then we'll call it S11 versus frequency. So first of all we have to set up a measurement on a graph so let's right click, select add a new measurement, we'll choose S11 because we want to see the reflection coefficient and in terms of the data source name, we'll keep it to all sources because we want to be able to see the reflection coefficient versus frequency from both of our matching networks. Also, we'll select the units to be in dB because this is the usual way that S11 is represented. So let's tick dB, click on apply and then OK and then simulate. So we can see now that uh, we have a good match uh, for both of the networks at the frequency of interest. Uh, in fact, we can see this a bit more clearly if we change the scale on our x-axis to being logarithmic. So let's right click on the graph, go on to properties and then uh, choose a log scale for the x-axis. Click on apply and then OK. Then you can see that at 1 GHz, which is the frequency of interest, we get a good match for both of the networks. We can see how good a match by pressing Ctrl M and inserting a marker on, uh, on this graph and then pressing Ctrl M again and inserting another marker on the second graph. Uh, we can then right click on each marker and send it to the minimum value so we can see exactly how low down they go. And uh, you can see that uh, both markers go down to more or less the same values. So uh, in terms of the match at the frequency of interest, we've got a similar performance. But then at lower frequencies, you can see that uh, we have a better match when we use the uh, capacitor in parallel and the inductor in series. Whereas when we go to higher frequencies, we get a better match when we use the uh, inductor in parallel and the capacitor in series. So there is somewhat a difference between the two networks in the way uh, the uh, S11 versus frequency behaves. What is more interesting to see, however, is the uh, actual frequency response of the networks across the frequency band. So we want to see what kind of pass bands we can expect uh, from our different matching networks. So let's go back to our schematics. We'll start with the CPLS matching network first. What we want to do here is to be able to work out uh, a frequency response 
for this LC combination that we've got here. And there is quite an easy way to do this. And uh, to be able to use it, we have to first replace this resistor here with a port. Now remember that a port can be seen in two ways. We have uh, the uh, port 1, which in our case uh, will be effectively a signal generator uh, in series with an internal impedance of 50 ohms, which is also capable of measuring incident and reflective power. But we can also have a passive port, which is what we're going to replace our resistor with. And this passive port, effectively, is nothing but uh, an impedance of the value that we specified with the uh, parameter Z, but it's also an element that is able to measure incident and reflected power. So let's replace our 20 ohm resistor with a 20 ohm port. So press Ctrl P, click, right click to rotate, place the port like so, and then change its impedance to 20 ohms. So this is, is effectively, as we've said, a, uh, nothing but a resistor of 20 ohms, and then it is also able, as an element, to measure incident and reflected power. Let's move this ground closer to the cap, and uh, we're all set to go now. Uh, what we can now do is actually measure the power that flows into port 2 from port 1 across frequency. And we can do this by using uh, the NS parameter measurement, which is called S21. S21 represents the power that gets from port 1 to port 2. So we'll do the same for our other matching network as well. So we will just replace this 20 ohm resistor with a 20 ohm port. And this will enable us to carry out an S21 measurement as well. So we'll be able to see how much power gets to port 2 when the original input signal was coming from port 1. So let's go back to graphs, uh, right click and open a new graph and we'll call it S21 versus frequency. And again we'll use a rectangular graph. Now we right click, select add a new measurement and then uh, we will choose S21 as the measurement. So we want to see what power is received by port 2 when the originating power was coming from port 1. Again for the data sources we'll just keep it to all sources because we want to see the S21 uh, for both matching networks. Then simulate. So you can see that we have uh, very different responses for the two networks. One is clearly a uh, low pass network uh, which is represented by the blue curve here and the other one is a clearly uh, a high pass network. So for example the high pass configuration could be very useful if you had a transistor that had a lot of gain at lower frequencies and uh, you wanted to avoid uh, oscillations, so you wanted to avoid uh, lower frequency signals to be amplified. You, if you had this as an input matching network then you would avoid those signals going into the transistor and hence you would reduce the risk of oscillation or unwanted components to be amplified. Uh, as we know frequency responses often enough are represented with a logarithmic scale so we could do this. We could just right click on the graph, go on to properties and then we could choose to have a logarithmic scale for our x-axis. And then you can see things uh, in a more familiar way probably where the slopes appear sharper because you're using a uh, logarithmic scale. The other thing that we can do is work out uh, the uh, bandwidth of these uh, matching networks. For now let's just look at the bandwidth of our uh, low pass one uh, and hence let's place a marker on it by pressing Ctrl M and then placing the marker on the curve and then we're trying to find the 3 dB bandwidth. If I want to uh, do things in a bit more precise way what I can do is just select on the zoom in icon and uh, then I can just select the area which I'm interested in and uh, Microsoft Office gives me a zoomed in version of it. So I just want to click on the marker and move it to a point where the uh, uh, value of the S21 is about uh, minus 3 dB. This really should do. Uh, we've got uh, minus 3.01 dBs and we basically want to see what the bandwidth of this low pass filter is. Now because it's low pass we're starting from a zero frequency up to 1762 
uh, megahertz approximately. Now if I go back to the uh, machine network schematic which represents this low pass filter, uh, having measured the bandwidth of the uh, of the of this network i can actually work out uh, its q which is the center frequency of 1 gigahertz divided by uh, 1762 uh, megahertz and this uh, turns out to be approximately uh, 0.6 now i can also work out uh, the q of this network algebraically and uh, we will follow the gonzales approach uh, for this one we can just look at the Q of this LR combination, which is represented by this inductor and this port. Remember that this port is a 20 ohm resistor. The uh, loaded Q of the circuit then can be calculated by halving this value. And so uh, we get uh, 1.2 divided by 2, uh, around 0.6, uh, which is exactly what we got from our frequency response on the graph. So the two things match. However, the problem that we have here is that once the source resistance and the load resistance are fixed, uh, with an L section matching, you don't really have a great deal of uh, leeway in the way you can choose your Q. It does depend on the topology a bit and also on the components Q, but the main factors in the Q are when you're using an, an L matching network between two resistive terminations are the actual resistive terminations. There might be instances, however, in which we want to have a uh, passband response for our matching network, which uh, gives us a specific uh, frequency response and also a specific cue. Um, so we need to be able to attenuate the outer band signals um, well enough. And this can be done by uh, carrying out a three-element matching with a, a, a T or a pi network, which will be the subject of our next tutorial.